My name is David Siegel. My name is Jacqueline Siegel. I am the founder and CEO of the largest timeshare company in the world. I'm a 43-year-old mother of eight. I thought she was the most beautiful girl in the world. It took me a while to fall in love with him. We have a great relationship. There's 30 years between us, but he doesn't need Viagra. At least there is that option if he does, like, I don't know if 10 years from now. <laughs> the 2008 recession hit many people, from those in the lowest to those in the highest classes. In a new documentary, The Queen of Versailles takes a look at how one of America's richest families faced this crisis, through the good and the bad. Now, Ryan, what did you think of uh, The Queen of Versailles? Uh, it's quite a good documentary. I think it's really interesting. Um, and it's, it's funny because the first 15 minutes of the film sort of, sort of uh, seem like one of these really bad TLC like reality a, like shows. Like a puff piece, kind like of. Like a puff piece, like yeah. just exploiting these rich people like, it's like in their mansion and stuff like yeah. that. So it's really, like, it's not that engaging at all. Um, they even th have a throne. They have a, th a throne. I know. <laughs> uh, and the, but the documentary is really aided, obviously, uh, by this recession. It really essentially makes the documentary because I know that that stuff, uh, w that the original parts of the documentary were filmed before the recession mm -hmm. and after the recession happened and its big impact on the, uh, the company, which is David Siegel's uh, Westgate Resort um, timeshare chain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because there, there was a lot of like money lending and things involved, so uh, the recession had a huge impact on him. And it's sort of this, and they say this in the movie, a reverse rags to riches story, or a rags to riches to rags. And not that they're broke, because they're still living in this big mansion, but they don't have any money to sustain their company. Yeah, and the title character is uh, Virginia, who, who she initially, she was a model, though she actually went to school for a while studying business, I think. And it's even blatantly said in the film that she's a trophy wife, and they have eight children together. And it's interesting because, again, like you said, the first 15 minutes of the film are you're like, oh my god, this is kind of revolting. And you kind of think of her as just this totally shallow, materialistic woman. And she definitely has kind of that, that you, you feel the fakeness to her even throughout the film, even when she's put through the worst. But I think eventually she really is a likable person, and you see how she is a good mother, too. I agree with you, and, and, and you see the, the highs and the lows and of, of David's character as well. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this movie, and, and I think that it sort of does a fairly good job of being somewhat objective in the way it's telling its story, and now and a lot of the way someone views this movie would be uh, relative to the political standing that they have. Uh, like, a right-wing person would, would probably view this sort of as a tragedy yeah. and would be and really feel very badly for, yeah. the, for this family uh, and, and, and you do in a sense because yes they worked hard for this but uh, but it, it's it's definitely reliant on capitalism well, and too then, though i find the point they get to isn't that bad to me like where they're like i mean it's definitely a step down but i don't i don't think it's i mean uh, again though like i said the most interesting thing i think is that is david because it's so understand. I think anyone even who's had a parent, like I think a lot of people have had parents that way, because you see how he's with the children, you see what he is with Virginia, uh, that kind of like being under so much pressure. And I think that really is the most, even though he's unlikable, it's the most human part of the film. Yeah, and I think the, 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 the really the true gem of this film is that it is very honest mm -hmm. and telling, uh, and you do get a good sense of, of, this of these two characters and their families. And what was interesting for me is I, I kind of, uh, had this s minor relation to the movie and connection because yeah. my f my parents are uh, timeshare owners of Westgate property in, yeah. in Florida and I've like visited their resorts and it was just sort of um, and I've been on these on these walkarounds that for the people trying to tell the tell the time uh, yeah. sell the timeshares and you get a look at at, at all that stuff too and all, all and it's kind of this weird scary game that they play but again it's the human story that really shines through it all in this one yeah and i'll just end this review by noting exactly the context of the title as well that they were building a home that would resemble versailles, versailles and it's like this huge it's not even like a mansion it's like it's basically a castle mm -hmm. and seeing because eventually they had to put it on the market and the it's recession. yeah and it's just this complete gross sign of American decadence and just seeing it like completely vacant and unbought is just it's it really has a great amount of 
gravity to it, like a really kind of a weight of like, holy shit, like this is what this means. But totally. Yeah, so I, I definitely recommend the film. I think it's a very engaging and easy watch too. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a great documentary. I really enjoyed it. So that's our review. The American dream is raising way up above what you started with, and that is what she has done. When you're down is when you find out who your true friends are. You get strength from your marriage? No. I'm in this fantasy world, you know, until reality hits. <laughs>